fearing the final embarrassment that I was going to do total injustice to everybody. I was going to make an ass of myself, my family, and my friends had I gone out that way. That everybody deserved a better memory than that. Matt, too, has had his dark moments. They all have. You know, looking at the my knives and going, yeah, that'd be quick and simple. I'll hurt for a second and then that'll be it. Uh, all my problems, my problems will go away. Committing suicide is something that can happen within minutes. It's not something that you debate for hours. The intensity of the anxiety can grow on you in minutes. Even though the, the, there is a program in the forces, you know, of suicide prevention, but it is, it is nowhere near uh, the recognition of, of what uh, suicide is. General Dallaire is now Senator Dallaire, and he's made a campaign of fighting to have military suicides recognized and honored. In sending our soldiers to Afghanistan, he says, we have to know the lesson Americans learned after Vietnam. Decades later, it's estimated twice as many U.S. soldiers died as suicides as on the battlefield. In 1997, 20 years after, reported they had over 102,000 suicides. So Vietnam wasn't 58,000. Vietnam was 160,000. And so it's not 131 casualties that we've got now. What is it? 145? 150? 160? Do we know? No. And we feel, I feel, and it's a, an argument that I'm raising, and I'm getting more data, that both Veterans Affairs and National Defense are downplaying the impact of the operational uh, trauma to being the primary source of the suicide. I have been putting in for access to information and stuff, and so far the answer I've been getting is they're not being tabulated. Why does the military not go back and track well, those we suicides? Well, we should. We, we need to. We need to track, uh, but it's so difficult because people will, will go off and and uh, whether they settle somewhere in Canada away for bases or, or they'll settle offshore, it is difficult to have a comprehensive data uh, tracking uh, a program. But, but you need to. We need to, absolutely. Because we have a responsibility as an institution for those people who have served this country. Right, two, one, three, one. Under Natin Chik's leadership, the Defense Department is overhauling the way it tracks suicides to do a better job of following soldiers who leave the military or are discharged. They might take two to three days to pull back and then they'll be back to healthy functioning. For those still serving, the emphasis is on prevention, trying to reduce the risk of PTSD by training future commanders to recognize the warning signs. What type of coping skills might they be applying? after the situation. Are they hitting the bottle? Changing cultures is never easy or quick. This is a start. I think it, it has come a long way. Um, I have just over 12 years in. Uh, my first deployment in 2004 uh, to Afghanistan, we had nothing like this when we returned. The message is all about recovery. I got very, very scared. I thought I was losing my mind. I thought I was going crazy. The promotional material features soldiers who had PTSD, got treatment, and have been able to return to work. Those who receive the support of unit co-workers and leaders have the greatest chance of returning to duty. Mental health issues are not new, not unique to the Canadian forces. But the military's own numbers show that historically, most of those diagnosed with PTSD have not reintegrated, but have left the military or been discharged. On the one hand, you want people to come out and, and identify and, and right. get help. And yet, on the other hand, the pattern seems pretty clear that those who do are ultimately discharged. Does this not uh, suggest that maybe it's better to be quiet and, and, and suffer in silence? The, the emphasis here is on recovery. The emphasis is not on discharge. And that's where we, we've changed the culture. Mm -hmm. Where a decade or so ago, when someone came out of Bosnia with an injury, they were out of the military very, very quickly. That's not the case. 
And where there is a, a medical injury that's especially attributed to an operational theater like Afghanistan, um, the, the authority to release that, in, uh, that individual is kept very high uh, so to ensure that mm -hmm. the entire chain of command and our medical folks give that individual uh, as much uh, care as we can. For Jeff Gravel, though, that's not how it worked out. Did you want to be discharged? Did no. you want to stay? You wanted no, to stay? Yeah, after all I had given, I would have expected a little bit more back, I guess. And maybe that was naive for me to think that my service was worth anything to them. But it's not. Do you think if your injury had not been PTSD, or that had not been among your injuries, that, that it might have been different? Perhaps. I think PT. SD comes off as a bit of a stigma, and a lot of people are scared of it still. It's a scary term, and it implies a lot. I mean, with that comes certain substance abuse issues, uh, all kinds of issues that can spiral from it or have spiraled from it. And as soon as someone hears that from a chain of command, it's scary because they don't know what they're dealing with as a soldier or a liability. So I, I think, it, I mean, it, I'm sure it played a factor. Mm -hmm. Because D&D says with great pride that they are trying to overcome the stigma and they're putting programs in place and generals are making announcements and... Uh, but what's the reality? Or what was your reality? My reality was the exact opposite. Having served with distinction in Afghanistan, Jeff was discharged from the military last year with a neck injury from a parachute accident and a diagnosis of severe PTSD. He's got a pension, but he says the military's promise of helping him find a job never materialized. Matt Salter, the reservist who volunteered to fight, is also struggling. I can't do my job. I uh, can't be a father. I can't be a boyfriend or a husband. I can't even be a hero anymore. Today, he's in therapy and on medication, but the diagnosis of PTSD is going to come at a high price. The job the military gave him when he lost his civilian one will soon end. And you're about to be pensioned by the, the yeah. army that you so loved. Yeah, the, uh, we talk about a regimental family and we mean it. The, these are, are uh, your brothers, your sisters, your fathers, your uncles, your aunt. They, they are family. And uh, I'm being told that because I cannot do my job anymore, I can't be part of the family. I'm going to be you know, I can come in and visit, but I can't be anymore. How do you feel about that? I, I can't think past it. This is, this is who I am. Sometimes I, I get upset and angry thinking and hearing about these people that have gone three, four times. <laughs> And they're fine. Since, uh, since you got home, he's doing better. It's not easy watching someone you love walk away from their passion. But then Kimmy considers the alternative. It's not fair for me to think so-and-so went over three times, he's fine. Matt went once, and he's not. Because, like I said, Matt came back, and a lot of people don't. It's the same attitude Dave Hawkins' family has taken. They knew even before he came home that something was wrong. Even still, it's taken six months for Dave to get a PTSD diagnosis, and it's only in the last few weeks he started therapy. Do you feel like you're, you're in control of your life or no? Right now, I don't. I feel like I'm just kind of on the sidelines watching it. Can you imagine a future for yourself at this point? Not really. Not right now. It's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. You kind of... I don't know. It's, it's really hard to explain. You're just watching everything go by. And you're not actually living it. 
By the time Canada's combat mission in Afghanistan is over in 2011, it's expected 35,000 Canadian men and women will have served. Using the military's own estimate, more than 2,000 will come home injured mentally. What Canadians must remember is that while the fighting will one day stop, the battle against PTSD will never really be over. And according to Romeo Dallaire, never really won. The group that came, that reinforced me in Rwanda, the 12, uh, eight, nine have had varying levels of PTSD. Uh, and one of them, it only, it only happened about three years ago. That's 12 years after. Wow. One of them committed suicide last year. That's 14 years after. Suicide. Do you still feel vulnerable in that way? I still am under therapy. You just never know. Now, if you want to know more about this story or any of our programs, you can go to our website. It's at cbc.ca slash fifth. Please stay with us. When we return, a look at the story we'll have for you next week.